Hello YouTube! Today the Bulls got clapped, which means that they really got hurt. We not only unwound everything we did yesterday, we went even lower. We printed a new low of the year. We even lost 360. We went down to 359.7, which means that it's looking pretty bleak out there. We're going to make our best effort today to try to decipher what happened. Make sure you are prepared for the end of the week, because that is going to be tomorrow. And it is going to be the last day of the week, last day of the month, last day of the quarter. So what's going to be so important for me going into tomorrow is going to be, uh, first of all, did we lose 360 again? Because there are a ton, a ton, a ton of puts that are sitting there. Also, I'm watching 363.29. So that is going to be uh, the level that is going to be last week's low. And as we know, if we close below the previous weekly low and also print a lower low and lower high, that is pretty bearish. So far this week, all we managed to do is make it up to roughly 372, which corresponds with our March of 2021 low, which means that we're now equally as bullish or bearish as we were uh, about a year and a half ago. So where are we going to go from here? Um, it's, uh, it's anyone's guess now. So it's anyone's guess. We're going to try to make sure we understand where we are because the Qs or QQQ is now starting to really get dragged down. We note that the 200 weekly moving average right now is at 272.44, and we got our first daily close below that. Last week's low is also 272.02, .02, and we also closed below that. So this is looking pretty bleak. Uh, last thing to note is that on Thursday, we also have almost the equal amount of volume as, as last week. That means we are dropping lower on increasing volume, decreasing price, uh, the increasing volume means that's very bearish. So as we go forward into the end of the week, which is going to be tomorrow, we want to be very mindful of these levels. I'm going to leave you with uh, with some feedback as well, just in regards to how we can actually be best prepared for this. So uh, right now, I asked this this morning to our to our group. And again, click on the link in the description if you want to find out more about that. Um, every single morning, I walk you through my pre-market notes, tell you what I'm doing, show all of my trades, and we got a silky smooth algorithm we share as well, which actually calls things very accurately. So if you wouldn't mind leaving me a comment, tell me where you are. Are you currently in damage control mode where you're pulling your hair out, hoping, praying that you're just going to get your money back? Are you number two? opportunity seeking mode that could be opportunity seeking long or short doesn't really matter and the number three no desire to trade um, today i had very little desire to trade because i'm still not feeling all that great so i would really encourage you to just understand which one of these three um, you want to do and then just also ask yourself in the past were there times when i should have been doing one of the other ones and instead i did something different so right now, if you are currently in damage control mode and don't have a plan, I would highly encourage you to come to our stream tomorrow where me, Justin, is going to walk you through for the final hour. And uh, the stream is already scheduled here. So stock market bull trap. Uh, that'll be the link for tomorrow. And if you have any questions, I would really encourage you to come. Um, I'm not Nostradamus. I don't have all the answers, but I'm wiser than the average bear. And I will tell you what we need to do to try to minimize the rest of the damage from here. Uh, I've talked about uh, the fish fish swimming upstream over and over. Hopefully you guys understand that now. Um, the big change in tone that I saw today is that we are noticing we have the biggest blocks, which are quite red. So when we look at uh, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Meta, uh, Meta had some layoffs today. They're doing a restructuring. Um, Apple got downgraded. Tesla, I don't know. Amazon, I don't know. But remember, what we talked about yesterday was, is this rally even real or are they window dressing? And uh, the stocks that got the hardest hit today were Apple, Amazon, Tesla, which are still green in the last three months. Even with today's decline, Tesla's still up 18, Amazon up 8, Apple up 5. So if this is a window dressing, meaning that they're just trying to make things look good, we're really going to find out tomorrow. Um, what I would also note is uh, what's actually happening to um, these, exp these specific patterns. So... We noticed that uh, we did lose 360. So the big question uh, for me going into tomorrow is um, where are we going to find resistance and where are we going to find support? So if we lose 360 again tomorrow and print another daily lower low, I think it's almost inevitable. We're going to test that 200 weekly. I believe that is right around uh, 358, 35819 to be precise. So I'm going to update that number and I will uh, make sure I'm paying very close attention to that for tomorrow. 
358.19 to the cent is the area we're looking at. <clears throat> One thing I want to do first here too is uh, actually just flip here to a line chart because if we're noticing that we're getting really chopped up in the noise, if we zoom out here to a line chart, uh, it just looks like we're kind of basing out here. And is that enough? Again, uh, it's anyone's guess. Uh, we're pumping, we're dumping, we're moving all around. There is very little predictability in this market right now. Uh, we're moving massively on headlines and uh, we cannot discount that. So what I would know is that on the technicals here, uh, we did poke above. We uh, Did we fill the gap? Not quite. 373.4, uh, 372.3. Uh, so we got about a $1 gap left. That's not that big of a deal. We can definitely leave that. So if we now use our, uh, our magnet tool here, we can note that <clears throat> we still have a gap left here to the upside, but only a $1 gap. So I would say eh, it's probably close enough. So... Next thing we can look at is going to be, well, we're clearly seeing the uh, the volume ramp up. So if we look here to the weekly chart on SPY, whoa, right? Yeah, we're quite elevated here for Thursday. We add on 20 more percent, we're going to get a higher high. That's going to look bad. So we go back here to our daily chart and uh, we just look and see that we're really carving out a base. Um, and I say that because... Um, it looks really, really similar to this pattern over here. And over here, we had the 50 MA as the resistance. And now we have uh, basically 370 as the resistance. So I don't know if we're going to hold, right? Uh, I think we will. Um, it's just uh, it's looking a lot less uh, optimistic right now. And the fact that we already lost 360 after battling for it for a large part of the day um, does get me quite concerned for tomorrow. Here's one thing that I think actually worked out okay today. It's uh, the last 10 minutes. So the last 10 minutes, uh, we note that we actually closed green. Um, we closed up by about 23, uh, 28 cents. It's not all that much, uh, but I think the bulls are going to take it and rejoice today. 9 million plus shares bought into the final uh, 10 minutes as well. So this is so important because as we're looking here to what are the culprits for our bear market, um, we have to be very mindful that um, the most important thing for us to be mindful of is that objects and motion tend to stay in motion so if we look here to our uh my, my note sorry uh here it tells us that until a spy can print a, print a higher weekly high there are just no longs that's a hard penny environment so it's going to be very interesting for me if again if you're bullish uh here is your scenario for tomorrow then we'll go through the bear scenario in a moment too so the, the bull scenario for tomorrow is that we try to close at least green on the week. Sorry, not green on the week, but at least where we opened. We opened at 366.4. And I say that because um, if we're going to print a weekly higher high in order to change the trend, uh, where do we likely need to be for that to happen? We likely have to be close to the high of the week so that next week uh, we're able to build up pressure and actually print it. So by closing below where we open at 366, uh, the pressure is on the downside. We got big volume, we got nasty fundamentals, and uh, have to be very mindful of that. We're also going to be going into a new quarter and a new month, and uh, below 395 means that we are in a monthly lower low as well. Um, closing out a new month, uh, sorry, closing out September at the low of the year as well is not going to do all that great. So um, the final thing for the bulls is that we noted that uh, QQQ yesterday actually got a true test of its 200 weekly, and uh, all we got was a one-day rally. So we got a one-day rally off of the uh, 200 weekly moving average. That is not what I would have expected. Why? Normally, they try to suck up all the liquidity around that average. So I think, again, not that I know, I think we're going to suck up even more liquidity tomorrow. And I say that because they want to give the bulls a chance to buy in and to test them. Well, how high are they going to buy it up to? They're going to buy it up to where we want to short it again? If they do, great. If they don't, okay, we'll take over and do it anyway. Um, so I think that the longer we hover around this uh, this 200 weekly here on the queues is going to be very interesting because, um, again, there's a ton of liquidity for them to suck up on the bull and the bear side here. Um, in terms of the bear scenario, all it's going to take is just for um, the objects in motion to stay in motion and for them to want to get paid on the options chain for tomorrow. So <clears throat> that's pretty much it. We're going to look here at the SPY chain. I'm going to look at a couple more charts. Um, but really, like I said, come tomorrow um, for our final hour. And we're going to walk you through and give you a nice stream. Try to make sure we understand what is happening. And I'll be paying very close attention to this for tomorrow. Um, again, I tracked this overnight the last few days. 
I am watching the 30th expiry for SPY, and there's just so many options on here. Uh, what I'm going to look at overnight is just whether or not these numbers actually convert um, into a lower number or a higher number for open interest. Um, we were at 60,000 for 360 yesterday. We went up to 80. So I'll be paying attention to uh, 360, uh, 365, and uh, 370. Also on the call side, again, pretty much MIA. Uh, 370 is getting some volume, but I don't know. I would say max pain for tomorrow was going to be 365. That's what it looks like to me. Um, so in terms of max pain, I think if we can get to 360, um, that would be very close to where we opened the week, as I noted, 366. So these 365, 365s are currently worth about two bucks. So that's 367. We would be marginally higher than we opened the week. That'd basically be a doji. Um, that's pretty much it. It's that simple for me. Um, last things to look at here are whether or not we are seeing some stabilization in some of the things that are dragging us lower. Looking at the dollar. Whoa, that's a shooting star, isn't it? Yeah, that's a shooting star. Down by 0.8. Is that enough? I don't know. Uh, it's looking constructive for the bulls, but maybe not quite enough yet. The VIX, uh, only a doji. So we can note that on a weekly basis here, we opening, sorry, we're closing today where we open the week up. We are now back inside of our elevated area here, which is the yellow box, and I'm paying close attention to that. Uh, next, we got the two-year yield, which is uh, slightly down, about by half a percent on the week. And then the 10-year note is actually up by three. So those ones are really important for me. And then finally, I am noticing that we're seeing gold uh, green on the week, <clears throat> Bitcoin green on the week, and Ether green on the week. I think this is so important because of what happened in the BOE in England, where uh, people would rather hold on to something that is maybe a little bit more risky um, or something boring like gold because, hey, well, at least these bankers can't get their f stupid fat fingers on it and mess it all up. So with that said, if you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If not, please watch the video that's going to queue up here in a moment where I give you my deeper thoughts on the weekend in terms of where I think we're going to go. And as always, I really appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks so much.